Hey guys, today we are going to look at some random cards and they are, it's kind of a hodgepodge today that have been going up in price. So Sharkon the Unbroken, this card was not played in standard at all. As you can see, he released at $30 for a moment before trending down into oblivion, mainly because he has very interesting colors for dragons. And you would expect a dragon deck, maybe a five color dragon deck, tier four, would be present in standard. However, it just was not. The dragons were far more aggressive than they were casual. And that left Tark Sarkon out in the dark. So great card, very powerful for what you get. You at least get a 4-4 red dragon with flying. I mean, for five, that's already significant value. And assuming that's what you want to do, you grab another one next turn. So definitely a card that is very powerful. The only problem was it was tricolor. Tricolor planeswalkers are just not played in standard. They would have to fit the meta perfectly. Talking about dragons that have recently spiked, uh, this one is in Conspiracy. Conspiracy is still very cheap and very available as a box. There's just a lot of value in it. And I like the spread of the value. I like the, cons I like the eternal fact that most of them are EDH playable. And the value is in the cards that I would expect to find them in. So this one is a Mythic. It has recently spiked to $30 before falling down some. Um, it's definitely something to keep your eye on. Um, it's a card that good. It's very, very good. And there's not that many. There's, there's two problems here. There's a lot of these boxes unopened. And people don't want to open the boxes. So you have a lot of them out there. But they've, they've all been in boxes or cases. Therefore, the price on this one is fairly reasonable in terms of what it is. It's a mythic in a set that was printed heavily, but no one's opening the boxes of the set because it was printed heavily. Kind of like a, a reverse, right? Reverse of what you expected it to be. So next, Pixie Queen. This is a great card. I love Pixie Queen. It's not very good, and it shows you how far a card can go with just good artwork, I imagine. Um, I mean, it's a 1-1 one, one with flying for four, and if you pay triple green, you can give something flying. So let me repeat that again. It's a 1-1 one, one that caught with flying for four. And then when you tap triple green, it will give something flying. Now back in the day, the reason this is a rare was because green did not have access to flying as much. And therefore this was... I don't want to say it was reasonable or heavily played because it was not, but it kind of made more sense. So when you had unique, so the color schemes were much stronger back then. Uh, green was green, green should not fly, although you had that one one fly from beta and alpha and unlimited and revised for one green. But there were certain things that colors did not do as well as other colors. For green, it really hated flyers. That's why they had hurricane, winter storm, all these anti-flying mechanics because you're green you don't actually have flyers so this came as a unique card so let me talk about the format 9394 uh, and what i believe it is so a lot of times when i'm looking at the cards that are spiking they are reserve list cards but they're not the cards i remember playing during this time period i remember playing as we'll see later hypnotic specter soaring sarah angel shivering dragon uh, that Merfolk dude, Merfolk of the Paratrident, which is a one drop, one one. Uh, I remember playing these cards. Oh, and uh, Dark Ritual, Lightning Bolt, obviously, Healing Slav. I, I don't know why people, I played that, I played it. I'm not gonna lie. Armageddon, Wrath of God. So I remember playing a lot of cards that were not on the reserve list and that have been reprinted. And by definition, they were iconic because they got reprinted i don't know how to say it but because it was like magic threw out all these cards and the most popular cards would be in a new set and they called the set core set and that's what happened because the, like birds of paradise for instance it was a very popular card it allowed you to put, play multiple colors which 
back then. Again, color identity much stronger. You weren't going to pair even two colors is kind of pushing it. Different tri colors. I I cannot remember seeing a triple color deck when I was younger. And I can't remember seeing a four color deck or a five color deck. The first time I saw a five color deck was with uh, Coalition and Rick Victory and Invasion. And that one, it forced you to be five color. And then there was Tribal and Domain, Domain, I think was the name. But yeah, anyway, back on to other one ones with lots of value. Uh, Zodiac Rat. It is quite interesting. All these Zodiacs are going up, but the rat is the most expensive of the bunts. So initially I read this as a 1-1 one -one of Death Touch because all rats have Death Touch. And it's like, all right, that's semi-reasonable. But this is worse. This is a 1-1 one -one with Swamp Walk. Huh. But we have the other one spiking. We have the Tiger, we have the Rooster, we have all of them. All 12 of the Zodiac is going up in price. And I think it's because people want to collect them. It's definitely one of the more fun cards in Magic to collect because there's 12 of them and they're animals, which is always a good sign for me at least. I like to collect the animals in Magic the Gathering. All right, so this is what I'm talking about. So 93, 94 really didn't make any sense to me. The most powerful thing you could have done back in the day was Dark Ritual into Hypnotic Spectre, turn one. That was considered so OP that Hypnotic Spectre was, I think it was like banned. They made a mistake, right? They When they reprinted Hypnotic Spectre many years later, man, people kept asking for it to be reprinted. That's how iconic this card is. So when we talk about iconic masters, this is it for me. Like This is my childhood. This is what you had to play or you would lose. So good, you know, turn one, and then you just hit them for two flying, and then they discard card. Eventually, they run out of cards, and you win the game. So the 93-94 format, I think, was about speculation to begin with. A lot of people just bought these reserve list cards and left these cards alone. But if I had to say what cards were actually going to be played in 1993-1994 when I did play Magic, I think I was seven. Yeah, seven and 94. So I did play Magic. It's this one. It's Hypnotic Spectre, it's Dark Ritual, it's Lightning Bolt, it's all the cards not on a reserve list. And finally, they're spiking because it doesn't matter how many times Hypnotic Spectre is reprinted, this will be the OG, right? This is the OG. All right, and then uh, on a side note, you guys could have saw this coming. There are pirates. Every pirate is going up a lot, especially in foil. Is this pirate good? Questionable, I guarantee you people have this in their binders. If you play Mercadia Mass, you had this because why would anyone trade for this card? Just like the other pirate, the free two flying pirate that's like $40 now. No one wanted the card. No one wanted it. I mean, this is a $21 foil. No one wanted the foil. No one wanted the regular one. Even more so because this is at least, it's not uncommon. But it's the only pirate. Like, I mean, pirates... I mean, if you needed a maximal amount of pirates to make your EDH deck, you would probably throw him in. I mean, he's on color. He is not particularly bad, but um, again, he's not particularly good. It says each opponent, so it's kind of made for EDH almost. Anyway, that is it. Leave me a comment below with your favorite card of this bunch, and let me know if you have any of these. I think if you play during Makati Mask, there's no way you got rid of that pirate, because who would trade for it? There's no way. Like you still have it. You still might even have foils of it because, again, the tradability of it is zero at the time. But now it's a ten dollar card. Anyway, bye guys.